Do you love him tonight? I mean, do you really love him? Does he mean that much to you? Oh, he means the world to me. I said, he means the world to me. Amen. He means everything to me. Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 18. Stand if you can. If you have it, say, I got it. Amen. Amen. Verse number 18, Matthew 16. And I say unto thee, also unto thee, that thou art Peter upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. Thank you for standing. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, sometimes it feels like that it just, it, it's, it's an uphill climb. I think sometimes we feel, uh, and it feels like to us that living a, a life pleasing to God, sometimes it feels like it is an absolute task. And in reality, it is. There's things because we have to, we have to overcome things. And the main thing that we have to overcome every day is ourself. We have to get a hold of ourself. Uh, I have actually talked to myself before, and I've done it like this. I'd say, self. You need to get out of the way. I've actually talked to myself. Self, get out of the way. I've called myself by my own name before, and I've just said, look, you need to get out of the way because God needs to help you. A lot of times uh, in, in my daily walk and in our daily existence, it seems that the devil will just bombard our mind about the craziest things in this world. And oddly enough, even though we know that he is a liar, the Bible says he is the father of of lies. He is a liar. The truth is not in him. Yet everything that he says he makes so believable that we'll take it like it is the gospel truth and we won't pass it off. When in reality we ought to just resist him as the Bible says he will flee from us. Here in, in Matthew 16 Jesus talking to Peter and he says that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. I'm thankful that God will always have a church. And you say amen to that. Amen. God will always have a church. There will always be a, a, a body of believers. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that. Amen. I want to be a part of the church because I want to go to heaven. Amen. I want to be a part of the church because I believe that God has ordained the church. Amen. To, to be a work for him and to do something for him. I want to be a part of the church. You know, it's amazing when God begins to build the church and every time in history when God has built the church, God uh, never, uh, uh, always, he didn't always go to the elite of society. He didn't always go to the strongest. He didn't always look for the most popular. But many times, matter of fact, more often than not, God used those people that were weak and that were broken and and even in sometimes it had a bad reputation. My wife and I were talking today, just praying uh, uh, about some things. And, and, and I told her, I said, you know, you can read the Bible about a lady named Rahab. Rahab had a very horrible past. The Bible says that she was a harlot, but yet she was one that was saved there and God saved her house. Amen. So it does not matter where you come from. Amen. What matters is how much you give yourself to God. And when God builds the church, he always uses uh, uh, the, the broken people, the, the weak people, people that we probably would not have chosen for the job. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, he used people that, that we probably wouldn't have chosen to put in that position because God will use our strengths and God, often when God chooses us, amen, is at the greatest area of our weakness. And I can tell, I can attest that for 
for a fact. You know, you say, how can you know that the way God will use you is in the greatest area of your weakness? I can tell you this, it's because I never desired to get up and speak in front of people. I always fumbled my words. I couldn't get them to come out right. Now, I, I'm just going to tell you, I, as ever since I have been, been born and old enough to stand and hold a microphone, I've always been on stage in church singing and doing things like that. But when it comes to speaking and doing this, that was my, what they call Achilles heel. It was what I just, I could not do. I was not good at it. It was my greatest weakness. That's why I, when I felt the call of God on me to preach, I, I thought there's no way that's going to happen because that's not where I'm strong at. But I realized real quick that God wasn't looking at me because that's where I was strong at. He was just wanting somebody that was available to be used. Amen. I'm thankful that God uses people just like that in the church. Amen. God's still wanting to save. He's still wanting to help. He's still wanting to deliver. And let me just tell you this. Why I believe the church to be a divine creation, I believe it's made up of human beings that are less than divine. If I can say it that way, uh, one day we're going to get called out to glory and God's going to do a great work. Uh, oh, I was just thinking that Brother Bill was talking about that body he's got. You know, one of these days God's going to call him off to heaven and that awakened body you got is going to be no more. You're going to have a brand new one. Hey, Amen. That goes for anybody else saying that way. God's got a plan. And I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad that God made a way. And the good news is that God chooses to work in our weakness to show his glory. And the reason he works in our weakness to show his glory is so that he gets the glory and we don't get the glory. If God looked for people that were real great speakers and got just those to preach his word, then that's what would happen. They would get the glory because that's where their talent was at. But God will work through your weakness. Uh, can I tell you tonight, whatever you got inside of you, whatever's going on with you that you say, well, I can never give my heart to God. I can never serve God. I, I, I'm not built that way. That's not the way that, that I, my makeup is. Let me tell you, you're exactly right. But when God gets inside of you and when he begins to work inside of you, he'll take everything in you that's weak and he will use it for his glory. He will use it for his honor. I'm glad that God uses it that way. I'm glad he looks after the broken man. I'm glad he looks after the weak. I'm glad that when he come, he was coming for the sick. He was coming for those that need help. He said those in the well don't need a physician. Oh no, I'm coming after those that need a physician. I'm glad that God works and I'm confident of the future of the body of Christ. I'm confident of the future of the church of the living God. Oh, the church. Oh, I know there's a lot of things going on in churches nowadays. There's a lot of things going on that might be looked at as theatrical. It might be looked at as, as some kind of something to draw people. I can tell you what, the true church don't need theatrics. It don't need all that other stuff. I know some folks use it. That's fine. Whatever they want to do. I can tell you what we really need uh, is the power and the presence of God. Uh, and you say, why is that? Uh, because he said uh, that when I build my church, uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Uh, the gates of hell. Uh, hell's not going to come against it. Uh, oh, and when he said uh, that the gates of hell uh, are not come against it, uh, that means uh, if hell can't change it, uh, then you can't either. Amen. It's built on a rock. It's built on a foundation. And the foundation is Jesus Christ. I said the foundation is Jesus Christ. The church don't need a collection of superstars. The church don't need celebrities. The church don't need unusual talent. But the church needs willing vessels. Vessels that will say, I'm the one. I was broke. I was destitute. I was lost and undone. But I come and give my heart to God. Oh. Hey, 
Amen. We need normal, everyday people. And the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe that Jesus Christ is building the church. You hear me? I said, I believe he's building the church. He said, I will build my church. I'm glad that Jesus is handling the building process. I said, I'm glad he's the one that's got the blueprints. He don't need my blueprints. Matter of fact, he don't even need my opinion. Oh, yeah. You know what he needs? He just needs a willing vessel to say, God, use me. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm glad to be an instrument of God. That's my prayer. Just about every time uh, before I step in this pulpit, uh, before I leave my study or I leave the house, uh, my prayer, I say, God, uh, let me be a tool in your hand. Uh, let me be an instrument in your hand. Uh, let me be used of you. Uh, the reason I say that uh, is because this hilltop is not my church. Uh, hilltop belongs to God. You hear me? Uh, I said, this is not my church. Uh, this church church belongs to God. This house belongs to God. And the true church of the living God. Oh, hallelujah. One day is going to get out of here. And I want to be a part of the true church. Oh, just because you come to Hilltop does not make you saved. Just because you go to any church does not make you saved. The only way that you get saved is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And see, when you get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, it don't matter if you're at Hilltop or if you go down the road the full gospel, or if you go all the way out to, to Bethel in Isla, Georgia, you're still part of the true church, the one church of the living God that will forevermore be established and hell will not come against it. Oh, God's building a church. You hear me? I said God's building a church and he likes to use people just like Bill Bass. He likes to use people just like Rowan Edwards. He likes to use people like Bodie Dalton. He likes to use people like Luke Espinosa. He likes to use people up like our Sister Judy and Brother David and Brother Leah. He likes to use people of all shapes and sizes. What are you saying? I'm saying come on in the church. Come on in the body of Christ. Get in the safety zone. Hell's not going to take the church down. And I want to be a part of the church. I said hell's not going to take the church down. And I want to be a part of the church of the living God. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. I want to get down to where I want to preach to you right here tonight. Gates. Always read this scripture. And in my mind, tried to figure out how gates would come against the church. You see, a gate is not an offensive tool. A gate is a defensive tool. A gate is a defensive piece of armory. Think about that. For a long time, you might have been terrified of the fact that the gates would come against you. But the truth is, what the gates of hell are doing and trying to come against the church is the gates of hell are being used to hold people in captivity. Oh, help me right here, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The gates of hell are being used to hold people in captivity. And how many knows it's not the will of God for anybody to be bound? Oh, no, no, no. It's not God's will for us to be bound by sin. It's not God's will for us to be bound by things that would keep us from worship. It's not God's will that we be bound from living a sanctified Christian holy life. It's not God's will that we be bound that way. But you see, the gates of hell keep a lot of people in captivity. And here's the thing. You can't really look at somebody usually and tell, hey, they're in captivity. They're in captivity because a a lot of times, matter of fact, the majority of the time, and I, brother, brother, brother T and I had a discussion around the dinner table about that today, about the mind and the things that go on in the mind. Many people are bound, and they never, you never see it much on the outside, but right there in their mind, they're bound. What is that? It's the gates of hell that are holding people in captivity. It's the gates of hell that are keeping people bound up in their mind. You say, well, I can't do that. I'll never be that good. I'll never be able to do whatever and we let the devil beat us up like that. Let me tell you something. It's time that the church once again would storm the gates of hell and say no more captivity. 
captivity, no more bondage, no more, oh, I don't want to be in chains anymore, but it's time that we had freedom, it's time that we had liberty, I don't want to be in a cell, I don't want to be strapped down or chained down, but I want to be free, hallelujah, all we need is free people, I said all we need is free people, and all we need is people that have really been set free to realize, hey, I'm free, I'm going to tell this tonight, because I'm going to tell it like I saw it, and I can't tell Brother Rowan's testimony like he can, but, that, but the night he got the Holy Ghost, the night God done a great work for him, I'll never forget it, he stood up that night, and I remember saying, Brother Rowan, do you want to testify, and this is what I see, now I know he stood up and he said, I just want to thank God that I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, and he stepped out of the aisle, and God done a great work for him, but I want you to know what I saw that night, standing up here, I stand about right back here, and I remember seeing him stand up, and he said, I'm free, and this is my perspective on it, I remember him looking and saying, I'm free, I'm free, and the first two times he said that, he said that to everybody in the room, and that third time, it was like he went, I'm free. I'm free. It's like he actually realized it. And when he realized just how free he was, uh, you know what happened? Uh, oh, that was a great change. Uh, that was something great that come over and begin to do a work. Uh, and I just think it'd be great tonight uh, if some people would realize uh, that you're only bound uh, by the gates of hell uh, because the devil's told you you're bound. Uh, when in reality, uh, it's time to storm the gates of hell uh, and say, I am free uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, are not offensive weapons. They are defensive. Gates imply bondage. They imply captivity. And this is a perfect picture of what Satan has done to the human race. He's holding the human race captive in sin. And I can tell you this, in case you don't know this, but he has no intention of turning any of them loose. You know, when people have to go and maybe they have to go away and serve time or whatever. Usually there's a date of release or parole date. You know what? Satan don't have that. When he puts them in, it's forever. That's his intention is to keep people bound forever. Oh, but when Jesus come and he hung on a cruel cross and he paid the price for our sin, he comes so that we can be free. He come and do away with the curse of sin. Oh, I and he done that. Isaiah 14 verse 17. It gives a good description of the work of Satan on earth. that says that made the world a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners. He's made this world a wilderness. He's destroyed the houses. He's destroyed families. He's destroyed homes. He's destroyed friendships. And he wants to destroy and to keep destroying. But Jesus said I didn't come uh, to destroy, uh, but I come to set you free. Uh, I come to give you liberty. Uh, I come to give you life. And he's a living uh, when he said uh, at the gates of hell, uh, we will not prevail uh, against the church. Oh, yes. Thank you. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Paul said in Romans. Who is he that condemneth? Well, verse 33 said, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Amen. How many of us have been tried? Amen. How many of us have been put through the render? You've been tried. Uh, you have even been troubled. He even goes on, Paul does in Romans chapter 8. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword? Oh, what's going to separate us from the love of Christ? Uh, oh, I know that the devil is trying uh, to bind us uh, and he's trying to keep us captive. Uh, oh, but once you get in Christ, uh, who shall separate you from the love of Christ? Uh, oh, nothing's going to be able to separate you uh, because he said, nay, in all these things, uh, we are 
more than conquerors uh, through him that loved us. Uh, I want to read that again. Uh, nay, in all these things, uh, we are more than conquerors uh, in him that loved us. Uh, I said in him that loved us. Uh, what does John 3, 16 say? For God so loved the world. Uh, who's the world? That's everybody in it. Uh, that he gave his son, uh, his only begotten son, uh, that whosoever does what? Believe it. Uh, him should not perish, but have everlasting. How long is that? How long is everlasting? I said, How long is everlasting? Forever. I need somebody to get over this. How long is everlasting? And the gates of hell, the what? They'll not, they'll not prevail. So you mean to tell me that he's promised me everlasting life and he give me his promise uh, that hell's not going to come against the church uh, and go, oh, hallelujah. I wish some of you get this tonight. I like what Paul said, for I am persuaded uh, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities uh, nor powers uh, nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature For I am persuaded that neither death Some people, God's a one to liberate. God's a one to touch. 
He's a one to deliver. But what are you wanting to do tonight? Hallelujah. Come, Sister Ashley, get us a soul. I'm glad to be a part of the side that's on the right. I'm thankful for what God done for me. I'm thankful for how he brought me out. I'm thankful for how he liberated me. And I'm glad that he set that call right there when he said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Amen. Who's part of the church? Amen. Who's part of the church? Anybody part of the church? Amen. Are you glad to be a part of the church? Amen. I said, are you glad to be a part of the church? Amen. Amen. You know the gates of hell is not going to prevail against the church? We are! going to get out of here. Hallelujah. Jesus is soon to come. He's soon to return. I hope you're ready to meet him. Amen. I said, I hope you're ready to meet him. If you're not, if you're not, I want to let you know. Why don't you come on over? Why don't you come on over? Why don't you let God help you? Hallelujah. Stand with us all over the house tonight. Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for your presence that's been with us in this service. I give you the glory and the honor tonight for all that you've done. Lord, I thank you, God, that we are more than conquerors. Oh, because you loved us. We are more than conquerors. God, you've given us overcoming power. God, my prayer tonight right here, Lord, is that you would help some soul right here in the sanctuary, Lord, that they would come and make themselves available to you. God, that you would help them to see that you want to do a great work, that you want to touch them, that you want to use the weakness that they think is useless for your glory. Touch us tonight in this altar service. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, I want to know tonight if you want to come on over to the winning side. Have I got anybody that wants to come on over to the winning side tonight? Got anybody that wants to step out and come on over?